Hi folks and welcome to Attica Armory. Now, if any of you guys that have Mossberg shotguns out there have ever kind of felt like that after you worked that safety a few times you ended up with a bad case of grand thumb, well, we've got a solution for you. Today I'm going to show you guys how to install this little extended safety switch from NDZ Performance. Now their kit comes complete with the uh, replacement mounting hardware which is uh, a hex screw that's a pretty nice little upgrade so you don't have this uh, weird little non tamper uh, flat head that comes with it and it also comes with a compatible hex wrench and some instructions so first I'm going to get the old safety off of there and I'll show you how to do that and then we'll go ahead and put this new one on now before we start please remember the most important thing when you're working on any kind of firearm make sure the firearm is unloaded and remove all ammo from the work area you're also going to want to leave the action in the open position so that the bolt is all the way back and you're going to want to pull that safety back into the safe position also please remember to give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to visit us at adigaarmory.com and check out a bottle of our citrus powered synthetic clp you're gonna love this stuff now let's get to it all right so some of the tools that i'm using is just a uh, basic flathead screwdriver i've got a little mallet got a small pick for getting that spring out of there and I've got a little pair of needle nose pliers for grabbing that little detent ball. I'm also going to use a little bit of this uh, temporary blue uh, thread locker on that screw when I replace it and I'm also going to use just a little bit of masking tape and I'll show you uh, the technique for getting this tamper resistant screw out of here so this kind of helps to minimize any marring or slippage or stuff like that. Now just a, a friendly word of warning there's uh, three critical parts here that you need to make sure you don't lose so once you unscrew this thing uh, underneath the main switch there is a base plate and you're going to need to reuse that little flat base plate and there's also a little kind of ballistic ball it's like a little steel bb that sits underneath there and that's actually for uh, the detents that are in that base plate that's what kind of hold it in place and that little bb is spring loaded so you want to be really careful when you're pulling this thing off because if that BB drops on the ground and just rolls off somewhere into some dark corner, you're gonna have a pretty serious problem and you'll have to order that part. Please be careful. So I'm gonna start off by just taking note of what direction my, my slot is going here. It's like almost 10 o'clock if I'm facing straight down the bore and yeah, about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And I'm gonna just put a piece of that tape right over the top of it. And then I wanna take my screwdriver and my mallet and I'm just gonna light kind of gently tap on the screwdriver as I'm unscrewing it just to give it some teeth give it a little bite now don't worry too much about the finish on the actual screw because it's going to get a little hammered but you're going to replace that thing and it's starting to go it's starting to give once it gets it's still a little tight that's starting to go on its own. So keep some downward pressure on the actual lever while you're unscrewing this so that it doesn't just go flying off. And we're going to very carefully, very slowly, very carefully pull this thing up off of here. One of these little magnetic trays are very helpful for these kinds of jobs. So there is that little EB. I'm going to pull that thing off, put it on my magnetic tray and my little spring as well that there and that's about it you want to make sure that this main bottom portion of your safety stays back it's like uh when i was tapping that action kind of worked its way forward a little bit so i had to push it back and that kind of holds it into that rear position all right so when you're deciding which direction to put this uh this new safety switch on just make sure that when you're installing the base plate underneath it from the original safety switch uh, that you've got those two Two detent holes aligned in the proper directions. For example, if I want to have the actual elevated portion of this switch forward for a longer thumb, uh, which that's how I'm going to install it, I'm going to want to make sure that underneath I've got those uh, detent holes toward the back so that they can engage with that little uh, spring and BB in the back. It would kind of look a little bit like that right there, but right underneath it. 
and I'm actually going to put some grease on this base plate uh, just to help reduce friction as that's going back and forth in there. Let's grease this up and then we'll get this all put together. Just going to kind of slightly grease up the both sides of this plate. And another area that I kind of like to apply a little bit of grease on is that little detent spring hole. Just a little bit in there. And around the inside of the, the actual channel that that safety block goes forward and backward in. That'll kind of work itself in over time. Just avoid getting any grease down inside the thread hole right there because we want the thread locker to engage with that and any oil or grease down inside of there is not a great thing. And we can go ahead and drop that, that spring back inside. Now carefully place BB back on. Make sure that it's balancing nicely right on top of that spring. And I'm gonna apply a little bit of thread locker on the threads of that screw. Now when I put this back on, I want this second detent to be the one that aligns with that BB because that would put everything in proper order. So I'm gonna kind of just gently set it on top of there. Uh, I'm gonna apply some downward pressure there. And I'll take that thread locked screw and just thread that puppy to the seats. You just don't want the switch to be teeter-tottering forward and backward, but it should be able to move relatively free in that channel. Don't over crank it. There we go. I like to generally use the long part just to help keep from over torquing it. So if you use the short part of the hex wrench, you're going to be able to apply a lot more torque to it. You know, use the long part like that and, you know, torque it down to a reasonable level with just that little short handle up there and make sure that it moves freely. And that's really all you need. Boy, that feels so much better. So much better. That's really a nice little addition to what is otherwise a beautiful shotgun. Many thanks to NDZ Performance for making this sweet little mod. Much needed and much appreciated. We hope you enjoyed the video today, folks. Hopefully this helped you out. And we'll see you again next time at Attica Armory.